Welcome back to Fast Scaling Tech Enthusiasts. So we've all been there when setting up your technology gear and dealing with the jungles of power cords and cables, just like this one. But guess what? There's a smarter and simpler way to do it by using PoE technology. So say goodbye to the cable chaos and embrace the elegance of a single cable for multiple tasks. And if you're ready to solve your technology challenges, explore our comprehensive solution page now and discover the answer that you've been searching for. Click the link through the description box below now. In today's fast-paced world, technology continues to shape the way we work and connect. One innovation that stands out for its efficiency and convenience is power over Ethernet (PoE). So, what exactly is PoE? It brings together the power of electricity and the versatility of data transmission all through a single Ethernet cable. In a traditional setup, multiple cable cords for power and data can turn into a maze of confusion. Just like this one, we have multiple adapter and a lot of cables connecting together looking confusing. But with PoE, a single Ethernet cable can handle both power and data, streamlining your connection and making your workplace cleaner and more organized. So PoE has different standard, which is the rule that determine how power and data travel through this Ethernet cable. And there are few key PoE standards that you should know about. IEEE 802.3 AF, 802.3 AT, and 802.3 BT standards. Sounds complicated, but no worry. Imagine this standard as power meters and each one has its own level of power to offer, just like different sizes of fuel tanks for your devices. So let's start with IEEE 802.3 AF standard, the small tank, and delivers around 15.4 watts of power, which is perfect for devices like IP phone or basic camera. So think of it as the power supply for your everyday gadgets. Now moving up, we have IEEE 802.3 AT standard, the medium tank. And this one can provide up to 30 watts of power, which suit devices like wireless access point and advanced camera. So it's like a step up to power efficiency. And now the big guy, IEEE 802.3 BT standard, which is the super tank. This standard can offer up to 90 watts of power, and it's like the powerhouse for things like high security system, the PTZ camera, or even smart lighting. And the BT standard are using all four twisted pair of the wire in an Ethernet cable, and AT standard only using two pair. That's why the BT standard can deliver high power transmission. And with those standards are your power guide, ensuring your devices stay energized and ready to perform. So when we're setting up a PoE connection, a power sourcing equipment like PoE injector or PoE switch is needed in order to supply both power and data transmission. So for today, we are using this 5 port 90 watts PoE switch. This compact switch can serve up to 90 watts sufficient power and a gigabit network for supplying different IP devices in a convenient way. It's compatible with IEEE 802.3 AF, AT, and BT standard, support up to 90 watts of power output in maximum, and a total power budget of 180 watts. It has four 1000 megabit per second data transfer rate PoE port and one RJ45 uplink port, and also with power handshaking to verify the edge device for safety connection. Power handshaking is like a conversation between the PSE and the connected device. The connected device will then send back the signal and telling the PSE how much power that they need, so the PSE will provide a decent amount of power. That's why they can work smoothly together. But when dealing with passive PoE devices, compatibility with standard PoE can be a concern. Since passive PoE cannot engage in negotiation, the power handshaking, so it's important while some devices might be labeled as compatible with both passive PoE 
and standard PoE, a proper consideration and testing is essential before implementing a mixed system because it might not work. So now, let's do the connection together from the beginning. So this is the router to provide the main network data. We are placing it here with the PoE switch. First, I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect the router to the network video recorder. So we can view the video footage from the PDZ camera that we are connecting. Next, I'm going to use another short patch cord to provide data to our PoE switch. Let's plug it into the uplink port. Since we're connecting to three edge devices, so I'm going ahead to plug in three Ethernet cable. And they're all connected all the way here to the edge. Now let's say goodbye to all this power cord because they look pretty messy. So let's just take everything out, unplug everything, removing this power cord. Okay. And also we don't need this router because we already have a router from the edge and say goodbye to all these cables. After unplugging everything, now we have a pretty clear setup. Those three are the Ethernet cable connected from the switch. Yes use them to connect to our edge devices. First, the PDZ camera. And then our doom shape camera. Last but not least, our wireless SS point. Let's plug it in here. You can hear the sound and everything is getting power and data at the same time. We can see the indicated lights are on. We can see the cameras moving only with a single ethernet cable, so eliminating the need for separate power supply. And this is a live video. I'm going to wave my hands to show you. So the whole connection is done. So when adapting power over Ethernet, certain key factors warrant careful consideration. The power budget, cable lengths, and compatibilities with PoE standards are paramount. Calculating the total power demand of connected devices is crucial to avoid overloading the network. Cable lengths affect power delivery, and high-quality cables minimize power loss and maintain efficiency ensuring devices receive the necessary power. Thank you very much for watching. Stay in the loop with the latest insights and updates. Subscribe to our channel, Fast Cabling Now, and join our community of tech enthusiasts. So you won't miss a bit.